You know, like I said at the beginning, salvation it is the greatest miracle that anybody can have. Every miracle pass. Every miracle that you have in life will do what? Will pass. You may be healed today, but it will pass the next day. Hallelujah. God can even heal you from cancer, from HIV. But I've got a good news for you. That, that healing is temporary. That's not mean you will be healed forever. Amen and amen. It can happen that you can fall sick again. You can be bankrupt today. You can be rich tomorrow. You can be bankrupt the next day again. There's no probability that says that you will be rich forever. Amen, amen. amen. Life has its ups and what? And down. Everything that we receive from this life will not last. The only thing that will last it is our salvation. Yes. Amen. Amen, amen. amen. So if there's one thing that we should be joyful about, it is the knowing that we are saved. That, that one will never be taken away from our life. Amen. Everything can be taken away. Your marriage can be taken away. Your house can be taken away. Your home can be taken away. Anything, anybody can die. Anybody, anybody can die. Anything can happen to anyone. And funny enough, what you don't understand is that you never know the day that the death will come. There are two things that you can't escape in life. It is death and resurrection. Amen, amen. amen. You can't escape those two things. When I'm in resurrection, I'm not talking about resurrection of you dying and coming back to life. I'm speaking about the, the, the resurrection of the dead when Christ comes. Hallelujah. Amen. On the last day. I'll put the rapture. Amen. Amen. So it means there is two things that you will not miss in your life. One of them will come before the other. It's either death will come before or rapture will come before. If we don't die now, the rapture will come. That's why we always need to be what? To be ready. Because we just don't know when the rapture and, 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 and the death will meet us. We don't know. We were driving yesterday, John is back, and then we saw an accident and then a man died on the spot. This can happen. You can leave home as you're going peacefully but never reach home. You can leave your house going to church for service. It may happen that you will never want to return home. Anything can happen. You can leave in the morning and go to work. It may happen that that going to work is the last one over your life. That you may not be able to retain from the work and go back home. Many people they went to hospital with the hope of coming back, they've never come back home. Hallelujah. Hospital was their last bastard. Many people travel, they thought they would go back home. They've never went back home. You just don't know when these things can happen. You just have no idea when it can happen. It doesn't matter whether you are a child of God or whether you are not a child of God. Everybody will encounter death in their life. Amen. Amen. Even if you are a powerful man of God, the Bible has so many powerful men of God, but they all died. Some of them in their lifetime, they were able to resurrect the dead. But great enough is that when they died, nobody resurrected them. They died and they were buried. Even those that were resurrected, they still died in the process of time. Lazarus did not live forever. Amen, amen. He was resurrected, but Lazarus did what? Died again. He was buried. That's a mystery of life. For you to know that everything around you is temporary. What you see with your eyes, you can't hold on unto things that you see with your eyes because what you see with your eyes will pass. The only thing that will not pass is the word of God. Am I speaking to someone right there? I said the only thing that will not pass is your salvation. And there is life after death. Wow. That's what some of us that are knowing each other now. For the fact that we are saved, our relationship will not stop here. Our relationship will continue even in the heaven. Am I talking to someone right here? They must speak to someone that will meet with them in heaven. Who is sure that we're going to meet in heaven? Come on, I want to see. I want to see somebody that when I walk into that place, that you will be the one welcoming me, or I will be the one welcoming you. But somehow, somewhere, we shall meet again in heaven. Oh my God! I don't know how it's going to be. It's going to be so beautiful that whether you're going to welcome me, whether I'm going to welcome you, but it's going to be joyful. 
uh, that we have sent the living God. Amen, amen. That what should motivate you and speak you the joys of serving the Lord. It is knowing that there are greater things and greater reward than what you see with your eyes. And, and that's the reason why Jesus came to die on the cross. You know, these days, uh, this man, said to your neighbor, this man, you, you, you better, you better life of salvation. Said to your neighbor, this man, you better life of salvation. Uh -huh, because I, uh, 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 this man is all about salvation, it's all about evangelism, amen. Uh -huh, uh -huh. And then I know we, we've been pulled away to give another vibe of messages in churches, amen, uh, 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 where salvation has no longer have the, the most impact of our sermon. Amen. We have more sermon of making people excited, excited of the things of the world that make them excited of the heaven. That's right. <laughs> Amen. People are no longer excited when you speak of the heaven. They are, they are quiet, they are cold because nobody wants to go to heaven. And it's, it is as if people want to hold on to the materialist things of this world. Everybody want to stay into this world. No one wants to go to heaven. Evangelism it is the heart of the church. Evangelism is the heart of the church. Amen. 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 When there is no evangelism, when there are no souls that have been won, you better be careful with such church. Hallelujah. Amen. If the church focus on making you better financially and not making you better spiritually and pushing you to go and also gain more souls, you, you must watch out for that second of the church. Must watch out. Must watch out what that motive behind. Let us speak to someone. Amen. Do you love Jesus? Amen. Now let me let me go back to the issue so that I can I can catch up with all of us before we read the verse 14 and 15. The Bible says at a certain <coughs> after this was a feast of the Jew, and Jesus went up to Jerusalem. Now, they in Jerusalem by the sheep gate of a pool, which is called in Hebrew, Bethsaida, having the five porch. And many times Bible scholar speaks about this as an image of the church and as an image of the fivefold ministry. Amen, amen. amen. The apostolic, the teachers, the teachers, the, the pastors and the prophets and evangelists. So the top of the pool of Bethsaida has been a church where everything will manage to come to the church. So all the, all the servants of God, they are working toward to bring the people away in the kingdom of God. Amen, amen. Their role is to bring the people in the world, in the kingdom of God. It is not for them to take the people unto their glory. Oh my God, I feel like talking something right there. You know, every man of God should lead you to the kingdom of God. Amen. No man of God should lead you unto him. Amen. Because every man of God is the way to heaven. He is not the master of Shabbat say amen. amen. The pool of Bethsaida had five ports, which means five what? Five doors. It means there were doors to go away to the pool. You, those doors were sending them to go to the pool. Not for you to stop on the door, but for you to cross and go away to the pool. So when you follow the man of God, you should not just follow the man of God, but you should follow the God of the man of God. Amen, amen. amen. So you should be the God of the man of God, that interest with the man of God, because they are all our role it is to bring everybody into the what? Into the kingdom of God, into the kingdom of God. That's why you should be careful with self glory that portray the image of the man of God more than Jesus himself. Amen. The church is the church of Christ, it is not the church of the man. We have a tendency of knowing men of God than knowing even the church itself. People have a problem of knowing even the name of the church, but they know the man of God better than the name of the church. Oh my God, oh my God, oh my God. Amen. Amen. We have the list of all the great men of God over, over the earth, over the United States, over South Africa. Sometimes if you ask somebody what the name of the church of that man of God, they don't even know the name of the church, but they know the man of God so well. Yeah. <laughs> that they even don't know. What the name of their church where they go. So all these purpose were bringing people away to the pool. Now the Bible says in those uh, 
in this lady, a great number of sick people. <coughs> so what happened, people used to bring sick people on that pool, just like people come in church for their needs. Blind, lame, paralyzed, waiting for the movement of what? Of the water. For an angel went down at a certain time in the pool, and that's what? And stirred up the water, then whoever stepped in what? First, after the stirring of the water was made well of whatever disease he had. Look at this. I want you to see the beautiful picture. The beautiful picture is this. The five poet speaks of the five full ministry. It speaks of what? Apostle, prophet, pastors, evangelists, and teachers. Now, the Bible says the pool, people will come, and they will, for them to get to the pool, they will pass through the five what? Ports. To get to what? To the pool. But when they get to the pool, they no longer need the ports. They are now waiting for an angel coming from where? From heaven. Do you see the picture here? The picture is that this ministry bring you to God, but when you are in Because that's maybe the angel will come at the end of the service. 
those that jumped in first, first. My God. they are healed. Amen. Being wet is not being healed. Amen. Come on now. Can you see the picture? Yes, Lord. This is the pool. Mm -hmm. Now, the word is there. Look at that. How many people jump? Boom! Everyone jumped. Now, you know the mathematics. If you jump into the water, you can't come dry. You must come wet. Wet. But it does not mean because you are wet, you've been answered. Ah. It is the one who jumped in first. So, what happened? You can all come. You are hungry. All of you are wet. Now, you begin to check who. Who has been touched now? Who has been touched? Oh my God. I just pray that this morning will be the day that God shall touch you. And I'm saying that the God shall touch you this morning. Even if everybody is going to be wet, but your wet will not just be the water calling you, but it will be because you have jumped first in the name of Jesus. Let yeah. us see. Look at this. I want you to see this. I want you to see this. Ah! Oh my God. It looks like somebody was praying for me. Yeah. My image is coming back. Amen. Amen. Yeah. I'm feeling myself. Amen. Let him receive some energy. Let him receive some energy. Look at this. The Bible says, In that place, an angel will come and stir up the water. And the whoever jumped in first was made well of whatever disease is hard. Now, a certain man, a certain man was well. They who had been infirmity for how many years? 30 years. A certain man was there who had an infirmity of how many years? 30 years. You know, the, the Bible speaks of a certain man. They don't even mention the name. You, <laughs> when you read the Bible, you begin to understand a few things. <clears throat> this man had so many issues that we could not even remember his name. That he was remembered of the sickness that he had and the time that he spent on the pool. Are you with me? So the time that he spent on the pool, they say he was lame for how many years? Years. Now, we are not sure whether he spent 38 years at the pool. I am not sure. Amen and amen. I still believe he was born and, and, and as he was growing, they discovered that there was issues with him. Amen. And, and they would come with him and put him there and try to wait until if he's healed, he's not healed. And then finally, the family decided that we are tired of picking you and dropping you. We just want to do the other way around. We're going to take you and drop you away. Way at the pool. You're going to sleep there and stay there. And, and this man was a, a lame. He could not what? Walk. So which means if he could not walk, for him to be taken from that place, somebody need to carry him from that place and go with him in the house and carry him again from the house and bring him again the next day. Can you see the picture? So every day he, he depended on the people to help him to get to the pool. He will call the uncle this week. Can you drop me at the pool? And the uncle says, I'm, 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 I'm very busy this week. I, I don't, I, I'm busy with my work. Like, try, try your knees. Maybe your knees can drop you. And, 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 and in the house, in the family, people put a schedule. That like you drop him on Monday, I drop him on Wednesday. You drop him on Friday, you drop him on Sunday. And people did it for so many years. They go to a place where they just went and have a family meeting. They resolve to themselves and say, we are tired of dropping this guy. So we're going to take the guy and go and just leave him at a way, at a pool. Let him stay there. I want you to see the picture here. The picture is this. Sometimes the people drop you at a time where you need them the most. You don't hear what I'm trying to say. I say sometimes even your own, even your family, when your problem persists, they will drop you at the time when you need them the most. They know you can't walk. They have a history of your sickness, my God. It is not like you are faking what is happening to you. All of them show you how you were born, how you grew up. But people will drop you to the time when you need them the most. <coughs> people drop you. That's why you see later on when he began to complain when he was talking with Jesus. Ah my God, because when he was talking with Jesus, he began to say, Masters, there's no one to, to jump, to drop me, to push me into the, into the water when the water is sterile. So which means even his own family was not around him. My God. There are times so that even your own family member will leave you. Amen. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. I know there are sisters and brothers in this house, but this is the word of God. Amen. 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 
uh -huh. may there be a time when people get tired of your prayer requests. Uh -huh. Because everybody knows that everywhere you go, you ask for the same prayer. And people get tired of praying for you. And people stop you at the time that you need them the most. And even people began to say you are faking because every time we pray, nothing is happening. It is only you that need prayer. You need prayer, you need prayer, you need prayer. We pray, we pray. And I, you know, sometimes what people don't understand is that this thing has overtaken you. You have no control over this demon that is inside of you. Somebody say amen. And they began to say, no, you are faking, you are faking. Why are you not being able to just come out of the situation? Why are you not able to come out of the situation? The Bible said, curse is the man that trusts in another man. That every time you trust a man, they will drop you at the point of your leader. What they will do, they will take you and drop you at the pool of a tiger. My God, I strongly believe in his family, they never wish for him to come back home. They wanted to be called and say, your brother is dead at the pool of a tiger. So they can just come and pick the body and go and bury them. But I have a good news for somebody this morning. There is a man by the name of Jesus Christ. He's about to walk over your situation. Everybody can live in your house, can drop you. Your family can drop you. Your best friends, they can drop you. But there's one man that's still closer than a brother. His name is Jehovah, the machine. Oh my God. He will never leave you, he will never forsake you. He's always going to be there for you.
in, in Jesus' name, began to talk to him. <coughs> and he says, For an angel went down at the second time into the pool and stirred up the water, then waved a step in Pharaoh's step. After the stirring of the water was made what? Well, whatsoever the city had. Now a certain man was there who had an infinity, 38 years. You must remember this man was sleeping there. Amen. 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 He was literally sleeping there because there was no way for him to go home. Hallelujah. How do I know that? Because even when he was healed, Jesus asked him to take what? His bed and go. Now, how do I know that? Because he was paralyzed for how many years? 38 years. And how do I know that? He had the other answer. The other answer is this. And, 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 and the other answer is this. Now, Satanus was there for the infinity of 38 years. When Jesus saw him laying there, he knew that he already had been in that condition a what? A long time. Jesus knew. This is the beauty and the mystery of Jesus. Sometimes what Jesus wants you is just to express your problem or your concern. But remember Jesus knows your problem. Amen, amen. He knows your problem. When you pray, you are not reminding God. God wants to see you pray because God wants to have a communion with you. Amen, amen. It is not that God is not aware of your situation. That's why he said in Isaiah this year that even before you pray, I should do what? I shall answer you. Now, how do you hear somebody even before he speaks? It's when you know the talk that is in his heart, isn't it? God says, before you speak, I should. It's when you know the talk that is in his heart. Amen. amen. You know the talk. Then he says, when Jesus saw him laying there, and he knew that he was already been there in that condition for a long time, and Jesus asked him, do you want to be made well? And, and, and the sick man answered him, Sir! That's why you need to be watchful. Somebody say amen. Do you know that this guy, <coughs> even as he was talking to Jesus, he was not paying attention. He was not paying attention. Hallelujah. Because when he was healed, they asked him, who healed you? He says, I don't know. <laughs> so as they were talking with Jesus, he never even bothered to ask, what's your name? Who are you? Because to him, he had a way that was set in his mind that if you must be healed, you must be turned into what? Into water. He had no other option. He never thought that healing could come from another direction. That's why when this man was talking to him, he was not paying attention. Because he just looked at him like anybody else around. And he began to say to Jesus, Jesus, the problem is not that I don't want to be made one. Well. The problem is that I have no body to throw me into what? Into water. Because he believed that if God has to heal him, it has to pass through somebody. Oh my God. He said, I have no one to do what? To put me into the pool while I'm coming. Another one step in. What you don't know that people will never tell you. Even as they are praying with you, they also have their prayer request. And when the spirit stand up, don't forget your prayer request. They will jump in first. Oh my God. Even when your problem it is the most critical. <laughs> you, you are having a problem that you need really God to intervene now. Their problem is a small one that they didn't answer even tomorrow. But when the spirit comes, they will start with them. This is what I call spiritual egoism. Amen. Ah, spiritual egoism. You are praying three people. This one is problem is, is the worst. Watch what why can't we concentrate first on asking God to help this one? I listen to me. Because the rest of you are fine. You can live with this problem that you have. This one has a critical problem. That's why there's no love. The Bible says when two people agree on one thing, it shall be what? It shall be given. 
There is a power in agreement, but the problem is many people don't want to agree with you. Yeah. Even as they agree with you in their mind, they want God to answer them first than you. So they will agree by word, but they are not agreeing with what? With their hearts. He says, every time I want to jump in, there is always somebody who goes in before me. And, 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 and. Ah, Jesus. Ah. Look, look at this. The man was laying. He was laying on the on the bed. This man. <laughs> can I open another branch right now? This man had many problems. Even if there was a man to throw him into the water, he's still going to face another challenge. There is no place which written that this man knew how to swim. <laughs> Can you see this? Even if they throw him into what? Into water. There is another challenge that is waiting for him. It is the challenge of knowing how to come out of the water. He does not know how. He has been in the condition for 38 years. So they could jump him, they would throw him into the water. But when he gets into the water, you are here, but now you must swim. Now you must take what? Swim. Nobody will take you out of that water. And, 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 and some of you who knows that, if you don't know how to swim, it's going to be dangerous. You may even die after you hear it. You are here, but you are dead because of your capacity of doing what? Of swimming. Okay. You know, sometimes, sometimes our problem only with Jesus. Because if men can help us, we'll create another problem. When people help you, they can create another problem. Every help that comes from a man comes with a problem. Because when a man helps you, he does not know that you don't know how to swim. He will throw you into the water. But again, you will need a swimmer training. My head come from who? From the Lord. I look up where I do the hill way and my head come. I'm not saying a man should be should not have to. No, you should understand this. Anytime a man has to be has been used by God to help you. I said he has been used by God to help you. That's why no man should take a credit of what God has done to him to your life. Because some men go around and begin them to boast. I prayed for you. I could, no, you did not pray for me. God uses you to heal me. Somebody say amen. amen. Because in case you did not want to be a father, God should have used another one to come and do what? And heal me. By the way, who told you that all our healing should come to men? Because some were healed not through the pools. It is not everybody need to be jumped into the pool and to be healed. Some will be healed, but they will not be jumped into the pool. See, there's no man to throw me. There's no man. Because people are selfish. When I need help, they are not there. Hallelujah. When I say let's pray for a sister so and so. They are both goes quiet. Father, help the sister. I pray for her wherever she they even know the name, but she forgot. I pray for that sister. Wherever she is, help. If you just say pray for yourself, they change their prayer. Somebody say amen. amen. By fire, by thunder. Devil, if you come by the sea, I cease. <laughs> when you come from the head, I command the head to cheat. <laughs> when you come from the hole, I speak to the hole to drop you off. I, I don't know what in I my God. When you come from a friend, I disconnect that divorce. They use every possible word to make sure that nothing remains after the prayer. Amen. We're going to do 
the Nigerian prayer. Everybody is at home. 
Now, sometimes when I ask myself a question, it gets so complicated. Because when, when he was here, yes, they said, and, they, and that day was the Sabbath, the Jew therefore said to him, Who was what? Pure. It is what? The Sabbath. It is not lawful for you to carry. Are you agree with me? Then the Jew therefore said unto him that that was what? Pure. It is what? It is not for to carry them. Now, watch this. None of them was able to spot or to notice that there was a healing. This is how people are. Can you see this? They were not able to notice the good thing that happened to him. But they were good at noticing the wrong thing that he was doing. I don't hear this. I told these people come and say, my God, because if you've been sick for 38 years, you should be known in the city as a, as a problematic amen, amen. And, and the, this one, the Jewish, there were people that knew God, they knew the law. So they were coming every time to the pool and they would see the man. I think they saw him for over than 20 years because he was always waiting for who? For an angel to come and stir up the water. Now, when they see him walking for the first time, instead of them praising God, they did not praise God. They began to ask him a question. Why are you carrying your bag on Sabbath? They should have gone like, oh, hallelujah, something has happened here. Because I don't understand, because the Bible doesn't specify when the angel will come to the, to the water. I listen to me. I'm going to assume this. This is my, my assumption. I'm going to assume that on Sabbath, the angel will not come in. I'm assuming. I, I get my, my, my assumption. Because on Sabbath, nobody was supposed to do what? Work. Because now I'm thinking if anybody who goes there, whether you had crash, huh? you are healed from your crash. Now, you are not even supposed to carry your, your crashes. Can you see this? Because if you carry your crashes, it's going to be a what? A problem. Why are you carrying your, your crashes? Now, open again our minds. This man was not doing the work. He was just carrying. There is a difference between carrying and walking. Hello? It is not, he was not making the bags. He didn't go and buy wood and put wood together and try to make the bag or anything on that day. He was just carrying what? The bag. But yet carrying the bag got him to trouble. Why are you carrying the bed on Sabbath? And this is how people normally see things. They don't see the thing, the good thing that happened. They see the bad things that you transgressed the law on that day. It was not lawful for you to carry the bed. You can't carry the bed. On the Sabbath, you can't carry the bed. For you to carry back on Sabbath, you must at least get the permission. Hmm. Hmm. A priest must give you the permission to carry the bag because it is forbidden for anyone that carries the bag on what? On Sabbath. They don't see your healing. They don't see what God has transformed. They don't see what God has done. All they are seeing is the legislation. They are going back to the law. What does the law say? The law says you should not work on Sabbath. Let me tell you something. Every miracle surpasses every law. Every time God does a miracle, it surpasses every law. You can't put a miracle on the law. It's not going to work. When God is about to do something, He breaks every law. I said, when God is about to do something, He breaks every law. Amen. Uh huh. There's no procedure. <laughs> you, uh, 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 Jesus. I want you to say something here, but I just stop. I want to say it. I want to say it. You know, you know, it has gone around with what has happened to. One of the men of God. Where, where is that? In Johannesburg, or, or for the 
for the one for the resurrection. I see the people doing resurrection challenge, and, and <laughs> some, some some they are doing the resurrection challenge with the the beer. I saw somebody he, he's coming here and they said they give him beer, and then he didn't test and they gave him another one. And uh, yeah, uh, 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 I hope you didn't do a resurrection challenge. Now, hear me. I was not in the church when the day the things happened. I am not supporting Pastor Hafukaru. I am not supporting the people from the funeral or the family member who are against Pastor Afrokau, you know, uh, the, all these other prophets that wanted to go and talk to, to him or for him to give an explanation. I don't know when, when last does God give explanation what he does. Amen. I am not supporting anybody. Of course, we know the government has taken the matters. They will be able to give us the final answers. The way they tell us whether the man died or did not die. It is none of our business. Whether uh, in South Africa, when they put you in the coffin, they must cut you here, they must remove uh, the part. Because some people began to say, how can you even able to eat? Normally when you die in South Africa, they must remove uh, the, what? the organs. Whether they must remove the organ, whether they must not remove the organ, uh, uh, or the brain also. They remove the brain. They, they open you up. You even hear? Okay. Whatever procedure they do, alright? Uh, what did you say? You know, like, uh, you see nothing wrong with you. Uh, no, I mean, it's not my UCM. Whatever procedure you do, what, even if they must also remove your brain, they can also remove your eyes. They can also cut one leg. Just to make it so complicated that you can resurrect that. They can even remove two hands. But I am giving you a use. When it comes to my resurrection, you shall come back to life. Yes, yes. 
here. Let me remember. Do you know how it is to see the spirit? Don't try. We are spiritual beings. We are dangerous. I can bless, I can guess at the same time.
it is not for eternity. You may need a physical healing, but there's something that is greater than the physical healing. It is your salvation. Hallelujah. Here Jesus was telling to the guy. He says, you are healed. You've been resurrected. You've been walking. It's fine. But sin, no more. Because if you see something left will what happen to you. Your 38 years of infirmity, it is nothing compared to what can happen to you if you continue sin. In other words, Jesus was saying to him, you better keep your salvation. Amen, amen. Now you are saved, now you know me, now you know you are fine. What is more important for you it is to sin no more. Because if you carry on sinning, you will lose something that if you lose it, it will be difficult for you to get it back. And it is your salvation. Last Sunday, I told you there is an anointing upon and an anointing in. You can lose the anointing in. And when you lose the anointing in, you go to hell. But the anointing upon, you can't lose it. But the anointing upon doesn't mean you go to heaven. Amen, amen. It is not anyone that does a miracle, it is the child of God. It is not anyone that prophesies the child of God. It is not anyone that does whatever they do is the child of God. Because what is more important is not the anointing upon your life. It is the anointing in your life. God is asking him all of us a question here. He's asking us a question. He says, We have done well to remain in the house. Amen, amen. He said, We have done what? Well to remain away in the house. But he says, See, no more. Let something waste. That's what happened to you. All of these are materialistic things that will pass away one day. Even the resurrection challenge will pass. Can I talk to somebody right here? That guy, whether he was resurrected, whether or not he would die again. Hello? Down the line here, he will what? He will die. And then he will be this time, this time they will bury him. This time there will not be a story of him going to Zimbabwe, passing to the church. Amen, amen. Oh, we were going to Zimbabwe, we wanted to pass from the church. And then, as we know, this time around, he will die in a place where there will be no transportation for taking him to Zimbabwe. And then, the only way it is for him to be buried. Because you just don't know where you're going to die. You may die under the water, you may die in fire. You may die a long way. But then God is coming and saying, He's saying that all of this can pass. The most important thing is for you to sin no more. To keep your salvation. Because if you don't keep your salvation, let something what? Rest is well. I want you to see the importance of Jesus Christ in our lives. Jesus is the center of salvation. Jesus is the center of miracle. Jesus is the center of everything. That's why I said I've never seen somebody who encounter the true power of God and remain the same. This man, after 38 years of suffering, he encountered the true man and the man of Jesus Christ. His life has never been the same again. Something happened to him. He was forever changed and forever became well. All of the luxury around you will pass. Are you sure that if you die today, you will enter heaven? Are you sure? 